Hi guys, that was a tune by Hubim, and this is what I'm going to talk about in this wee section we're doing today. That was a tune by Hubim, you might have not have heard before, it's called Esta Sel Har, and uh, it's not so much an arrangement of it, it's just the way I play it. And this is what I want to talk about, uh, some of the Habim tunes and how hard or how easy they are to play it in the guitar and how I go about playing them. And nine times out of ten, what we'll do is I'll get a hold of the sheet music for the tune that I want to learn. And uh, I'll just look at the melody line, that's all. Try and not get piano music, try and get, as I say, where it's just giving you the tune and the melody line and the chords. And then between the two of them, I'll work out how I want to play it. Because I said before in another video, sometimes the thing that's really difficult is to play the melody, play the harmony and play the bass and keep the time. It can be tricky. And there's one or two ways round about that. But that's how I do it. I don't really even call them arrangements. It's just the way I play them. And that's all it is, just a melody line with the chords, and I'm working my way right through them. And that's how I did it with that one there, Esther Sale Har. Now, as you know, these are tunes by Antonio Carlos Abim, which are great for the guitar. Uh, the chord changes on them are beautiful, and for us, they're really interesting and satisfying to play. Uh, I think I said this before, but the best way to describe Habim's music from a guitar point of view is most of the time, not all, but most of the time, very simple, basic melody lines but incredibly complex chord changes. Uh, and that's where the fun comes in. And to be quite honest here, some of them are really tricky to do, like the Desfinado. I'll play a wee bit of that one later. That's a hard one to do. Uh, but at the same time, that's how I did it. I got hold of the music, just melody line, single line, melody line in the chords, and worked my way through it, how I was going to play it. And I'd like to add a wee caveat here. If it's Brazilian style of guitar they're playing, and of course these are Brazilian tunes, uh, YouTube is full of real authentic Brazilian guitarists who can take you through all this using the, you know, the proper techniques, the different sort of tempos and having shows, perdido altos and all the different techniques of Brazilian guitarists. I'm not going to show you that. I'm basically just showing you how I play these things. Although I watch these things and I enjoy studying them too, this is basically just how I do it, what I play and the tunes that I play. Uh, now Habim, obviously a piano player, but he did have a guitar. And so, and I'm not exactly, although I've spent ages on YouTube on it, and even, I was playing this music before the internet was ever heard of, and it was really hard to even get the music of these things, or uh, other musicians playing these tunes. Uh, you could get the girl from Ipanema easily enough, but the rest, very hard to find them. So it's great now that we can get a hold of these tunes. And uh, there's the three guitarists that really did these tunes fantastic justice, and we'll talk about them maybe in another video. That was Jean Gilberto. Uh, Louis Bonfa and Baden Powell, but today's Andy Duffy, so we'll talk about these tunes. Now it's the same thing I've always talked about. Most of them have that basic bossa rhythm. You know, I remember I told you before the the thumb plays the bass and the three fingers play the trebles. So if I'm playing like say, an A major ninth chord, which is just a do that here, the strings are beginning to go. It's just the basic thumb and the bass. Three fingers play the trebles and just a gentle bossa rhythm. And that's basically what I'm doing through all these uh, different tunes that I play. 
But anyway, let me run through one or two of her beam tunes. You could maybe think of one, uh, pick one of these and maybe try and work a wee bit on it. The most, it's not so much easy, but the most straightforward one to work on is Meditation, which again, some of these titles you won't know, but once you hear the tune, you'll go, oh yeah, I know that one. So Meditation is this one. I'd actually play the whole of that in another video, you'll be able to find it. But why I like meditation, I used to play this quite a lot when at restaurants and functions and things like that. And I used to play it with a really good bass player. So after I'd taken the melody line, I would just chill out and he would take the melody line and I really enjoyed it because it allowed me to really work on just playing the real bossa style, which is like most things, less is more. So all I was doing was playing the chords and in this bossa rhythm and I could really work on it. And just simple chords. Just working on that, keeping it going. So meditation's a really good one and it gives you that real boss of feel. Another one that you'll hear a lot is Corcovado. And that works in a, uh, a running theme that you'll get in a lot of Habim tunes where the bass will run down all the time in semitones. You'll get this. It does it in a lot of tunes. In fact, that's how that one I played, Esther Sale Har, is quite unusual because it goes up in semitones. It was an E. <laughs> So, most of them go down. But again, it helps you when you're trying to work out an arrangement or how to play them. You get a rough idea of the way Habim works in other tunes. So anyhow, Corcovado. <laughs> so that was him descending down from an A, A minor. Then he does the same thing from F minor. So when you're working on these pieces, you can hear where he's going. And he's usually got a really cute middle eight and now Corcovado is. Then the intro, descending. These are just wee quick sketches of all these tunes, guys, to give you an idea. Corcovado is another really good one, because as I say, you've got that descending bass. Now that leads me back to what my left hand is doing just now, and that's playing an F major seventh. A lot of these tunes, and a lot of Brazilian tunes in general, are played in, not always, but again, a lot of the time are played in F, or they're related to F, B flat, G minors, these sort of thing. Sometimes I change the, the key of them. Uh, I'll show you the next one I did where I changed the key, mainly so I could play it better in solo guitar, and that's Wave. I'll do that in a wee minute. Another thing you'll find if you actually go on YouTube, and again, I've been doing this for years, uh, watching Brazilian guitars, even the really likes of videos of them in the 60s, what a lot of Brazilian guitarists do is they won't always play a full bar. By the way, everybody says this about Brazilian guitar. It's not just me that's found this out. You'll hear this mentioned a few times. So instead of playing an ordinary A minor chord in fifth position, like that, they will tend to play it like this, just using the notes that they really need. Rather than play the whole chord and use the right hand to miss out the strings, they will play it like this. And the reason why, there's a better chance of finding the melody line within that particular chord shape. You'll see this pattern quite a lot in Brazilian music. See, 
see you've got the alternating bass note there. So sometimes you look at an accord and you think, what's going on here? And you're trying to figure it out. That's what they're doing. Instead of playing the full chord, they'll play part of the chord and instead of barring it, they'll use this and that allows them to be able to get good access uh, to the melody line. Plus they're not shy of playing an open string because you're playing these things mainly on acoustic guitars and it can actually sound quite cool. Now, again, we're sticking uh, pretty much the, well, the, completely to a beam tunes here. And sometimes they're not predictable at all, and that's what makes them great for guitarists. And the chord changes are really interesting. Uh, say, for example, I do wave in D, and as a I love the middle section in this. Yeah. Where that gets a good example of what the right hand is doing. Just the bass, as I keep talking about it. I'm in D, so I'm playing a D bass. Let me just play a simple D major seventh chord here, and I'm just playing the three trebles. You can hear that's a diminished chord to A minor to F sharp diminished. Great chord changes, and I say even if you're just looking at a melody line in the chords, you'll learn so much. Uh, the last one, and I must admit, it's the trickiest one to play. And uh, you remember how I've always been saying from day one, uh, when you, you're uh, listening to a tune, always think of your one, four, five, the key that you're in, the first, the fourth, the fifth, the most common chords. And then you've got the minor second, then you've got the minor sixth, and then you probably have a diminished chord, uh, chord a semitone up. Uh, you probably have a minor seven flat five, a tone up, and that'll go into, anyhow, on and on and on and on. That's great, except with Habim, you've really got to be careful because he goes places you can't guess and that's what makes it really interesting. Like I said, Desafinado, if you haven't been playing for years and you put it on, you think, I'll just take it off the record, forget it, it's not going to happen because he takes it to crazy places, he changes keys and that's what makes it so cool. Uh, I'm not going to play it all, but even just the first part, you know. <laughs> Listen to that note. Change key. Change key. <laughs> Typical Habim chord. It's a great tune, Des Fernando. And it's one, if you decide to work out an arrangement of it, really tricky. But if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's all I did. Managed to get a hold of, hold of the melody. Sing a line melody. Um, with the chords above it, and work your way around about it, try to find the melody in the bass. Meanwhile, at the same time, you're trying to keep this, that the sort of rhythm. And same thing, it's an F. Though, to be honest, again, using the Brazilian style, you're not always barring the chord like that. So. Playing that a lot. Anyhow, there's lots of Habim tunes, and uh, they all sound fantastic in the guitar. Oh, one... Uh, I'd better mention before I finish this, this is the most famous one in Sensitis. Just play a tiny bit of it.
that's a cool one. Fat sensitive is not too hard. Uh, I changed the key in that to B minor. It's just the way I think, the way I was hearing it in my head, and I could work out the chord changes. If you listen to it very careful, you can hear me touches a Chopin in there, so I'm not saying he took it away from Chopin, but it's... anyway, have a listen and see what you think. Sensitive is a great tune, again, and they're all doable, they just take a wee bit of work. Uh, oh, one last one. Uh, I played this one again. I played most of these on YouTube if you have a look. The one note samba. Which is great. It's actually two notes. You've got the D. Then a G. So you can actually see what's happening. Simple melody line. Complex chords. The only thing I'd say about the one note samba are to give its proper, ti proper title, Samba de Umanota. So the middle section's tricky, you know. I, I probably won't be able to do it out of context, but. Down a tone. Now that's another thing he does a lot. Right, I've said enough. Just to let you hear some of these Habim tunes, that you can play them on the guitar. Those were very basic arrangements, and it's a really good way to learn more about the guitar, more about the bossa, and more about what you can do with the guitar. So I hope to do some more of this uh, in another video, and if you have a look, at one time or other, I've played these tunes on YouTube, and I think some of them actually showed you, not all of them, because there's too much to show you over YouTube, but the most important parts of them. So anyhow guys, I hope that was some use to you and I'll see you again. So thanks very much for watching. Bye now.